Bonsoir, welcome backstage. We've got a host of exciting panellists ready to give their views. What must it be? It's eight o'clock. It's Sunday night. It's Retrovision. And a very good evening to you all. Thanks so much for joining us this evening for our penultimate, our penultimate episode oh, no. in this series of Retrovision. There is only one more episode left and Andy has exciting news about that coming up uh, later on this evening, such as the reveal uh, for our watch party on Wednesday. Now, let's get the housekeeping over and done with first and foremost. Don't forget, guys, just down there, click the like and subscribe button. And if you click that little bell thing as well, it'll notify you when we go on air. And trust me, this week is like our oh, Eurovision week, no exceptions. We have pulled out all the stops. We are going full on. And I think every single night this week, you will be able to tune in to ESC Fan TV in some form or another. Now, so, Tom, sorry, just, just, just for the old people like Tim Gray. Explain where the where the bell button is and what it does. Well, if you if you if you look at your YouTube video and you move over slightly to the right hand side, you should be able to hit a subscribe and a little bell thing there, and it turns notifications on, and you can get a notification on your phone. And if I that it wakes I, you up, and if you're having actually, your afternoon yeah, nap, and it tells you that you've gone live <gasps> as well. Wonders so you, of modern technology. I know, modern technology. It's fantastic these days. Now, guys, I think I've obviously come dressed as a backing singer this evening, all black, <laughs> because I need to let my panellists shine. Oh, and what a panel we've got this evening. Good evening, Andy. Oh, uh, just a little bit. A little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more. A little bit more Gina G. Well, actually, a little less Gina G would have been a good idea, considering that dress she wore. Ah, uh, true. But, you know, as Terry Wogan once said of one of our entries, you know, best legs in Europe. Now, also joining us this <laughs> evening, we've got the lovely Sean. Good evening, Sean. <laughs> Hi, everybody. OK, I'm uh, here as Morton Harkett, apparently, although I do look a bit more like Harry Potter. I'll do my best to be a lot more interested and entertaining than Morton was on the night. Yeah, I did think it wasn't so much, um, you know, Morton or Harry Potter. I thought we were talking more like that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just throwing that out there. Just, just, you know, just, just saying, you know, for those that don't know, that's, that's the uh, quote, little guy from Man with the Golden Gun. Anyway, we move on. <laughs> Joining us this evening as well, we've got the fantastic Ian and Gina G, or should I say Donna? Good evening. Hi. Hi Great to see you guys again. We've also got to say good day because it's like five in the morning to Gemma. Good morning. Good evening. I'm ready to party. Hey. <laughs> also joining us, it's the wonderful Steve. Hey, Steve. Hi, and today I'm Regina, who represented Slovenia, so all the way from Ljubljana. Hey, and also joining us, oh, well, I think the likeness is uncanny. It's Stuart. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Oh, we just need to just need to just hang on. There we go. Let's just get a close up on that. There oh, we go. Oh, shake your armpits. <laughs> <Look at hell>. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? The effort knows no bounds. Fantastic. <laughs> right, guys, we need to get on with the show. We've got some fantastic entries to look at from Wednesday's watch party. But first of all, did anyone notice any missing countries on Wednesday night? Hmm. Yeah, a few. Yeah. A few. What about Germany? Germany. The mm. only time Germany has missed a Eurovision Song Contest. Now, I could explain it, 
But do you know what? I thought I'd get a special guest in to do it for me. <laughs> Is it Run the Queen? The ah. Yeah, we... <laughs> no, 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 no. Not the Even queen. better than that, it's <laughs> the President. Hi, it's ah. Alistair here. Now, Germany, 1995, and a bit of an air. You know what? They came last. So the German broadcaster thought, 1996, right, we're going to go all out, we're going to win this, we're going to get a really good result for Germany. They had a great national final called Ein bisschen Gluck, which uh, ironically means a uh, bit of luck. And uh, the song that won it was the fantastic Blower Planets from Leon, one of the most contemporary songs ever to have been selected for Eurovision at that point. Bear in mind, this was the mid-90s, the home of the ballad fair, so having an up-tempo dance track was really revolutionary. I heard this, I thought this was going to storm the contest, and didn't even make it to the grand final for that year, for one year only. They had this odd audio-only semi-final where jurors were sent tapes of all the participating songs. And bizarrely, Germany didn't make it. And when you look at the songs that did make it, no names mentioned, Iceland, uh, should be doing how i cannot believe germany didn't make it it's become a bit of a classic for me it's a song i always like to hear at a eurovision disco so modern so up tempo so contemporary for 96 that was why we needed to really give the contest a bit of a kick up the the what's it which uh, which really happened a couple of years later but sadly wasn't to be for the fabulous leon and blau planets for germany in 96 never mind Oh, thanks to Alastair there, OJ President, giving us our, OJ UK President, giving us our little rundown there. So, guys, what do we think of this idea? Audio semi-final? On cassette yeah. tape. <laughs> yes. On cassette tape as well. Cassette cassette coming back. Tape around, around Europe. It was a shit <laughs> idea, wasn't it, really? Not, not even a video. I mean, goodness me. <laughs> no, but, and if some of them had national finals as well, to get to that point that their tape would be submitted, it's like surely they've got the stage bit done and everything. So it seems pointless just having an audio version of, of the thing. But never mind. I and agree, and I think some of them just sent um, live versions as well. They weren't even um, CD versions of the songs. So. Yeah. Mm. And then the following year, they added another two songs to the final. So they might as well have done that in 96. Yeah, and Germany came 24th in the semi-finals. So they would have actually um, got through if mm. they'd have had the uh, opportunity as well. Mm. Um, and Tom, which... who, who won the semi-final? Ah, well, it wasn't mm. Ireland. It was Sweden. Yeah. It was yeah. Den Wilder that won the semi-final with Ireland coming second and the United Kingdom's Gina G coming third. Am yes. I right in thinking that Macedonia first entered in 96 but didn't qualify? So they made the debut a couple of years later in 98 as well. Yes. Yeah. You would be correct. Yeah. So, yeah. It's oh, we, we could, uh, we it's could have a whole show about this. this we, could, we could talk about it forever. Yeah. But oh, nah. it just gives us a tantalising glimpse, I thought, a tantalising glimpse of what could be. Now, guys, in true Retrovision style, we are going to go through these songs in performance order. Roughly, um, very roughly in some cases, but <laughs> let us start by looking at the first two songs in tonight's show. <laughs> With his fingers crossed. <laughs> Uh, our first two songs there, and if people didn't get that to begin with, um, alas, um, someone may have uploaded the clips in the wrong order today. <clears throat> <laughs> I had one job. Now, <laughs> Sean, what did we make of the Turkish song? I mean, it, it's okay. It's nothing special. Uh, it, it it kind of it translates as the fifth season. It's it's sung in Turkish. It's about this woman who uh, she's in heartbreak because her partner's leaving, and she wishes that she'd wake up in like the fifth season because she's had enough of this autumn. It's all very, I don't know. It's just a bit drab and dreary. I think it did look to finish 12th. Uh, I, I don't think, you know, considering it was first on as well, I'm really looking to finish 12th. But, uh, and did you did you recognise the singer? That's the question. No. 
You to be honest, I'm a pissed. Watching. I'm a pissed when I watched it. So, oh, <laughs> sure. Right, guys, he's going to help Sean out here. It's Go on, Steve. It is. The next year came third with a new nose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somebody had. She wasn't the only one. Really different. Really oh, different. Oh, oh, got a new nose as well, didn't she? Between <laughs> sixty-seven and seventy-two. <laughs> but also, shall we shall we say the same dress? I think, and she did substantially better. But also, she did. I mean, she was on first in ninety-six and second in ninety-seven. So... She probably had quite a long time to be sleeping with the right people. Ooh, harsh. <laughs> Allegedly. Ooh. Oh. And apparently she came fourth in Turkey's uh, national final in '98 as well. Yeah. So she was she was close-ish to representing Turkey the following year. And um, oh. also, let's I mean let's let's delve into uh, our Spanish ballad. Was, was it a ballad? I don't know. Steve, let me know. I think it was a dead cat or, or a cat dying. <laughs> it was just awful. it probably seems such a good idea after the wonderful bandido. Um, six years early, which is kind of probably a bit more flamenco house than it is flamenco, but it was awful. And I don't know how this qualified when uh, countries like Germany um, failed to make it. Uh, just bloody awful, to be honest. Uh, well, I can obviously see lots of love, lots of love for our first two songs this evening. Now, guys, don't forget, if you are watching this and you're like, oh, my God, those panellists, they're so infuriating, or you're just loving the look of Steve's wig, please send us a message in the chat room. We would love to hear from you. Um, and we, we also put your comments and things up and discuss them throughout the show as well. Now, the United Kingdom, I, th I thought the UK had a, had a, had, a, had a solid chance in 1996. Number one across the whole of Europe. What could possibly go wrong? Show me the way. Oh. oh, right. Come on then. Obvious oh. question. I'm going to have to go straight. I'm going to have to go to Gina G first, Sean. Because, like, you know, oh. she, she's got the get -up. Which one? Which well, one? The <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go for the one that's got the, uh, the one, one, on. one that's got the dress on. And then we'll go, we'll go to our second Gina G. <laughs> Well, as far as I was aware, life, the beginning started a little bit shaky, a little bit nervy, but once I got into it, it was fine. I just relaxed. I got my girls coming on to me. It was brilliant. I didn't see anything could go wrong after that. <laughs> <I did>. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Andy? <laughs> well, you see, had it been 1997, I could have had a fat bird at the back, off the screen, <laughs> singing it for me. Who would have got that high note perfectly? And I could have had two more girls in extremely short dresses instead of the blokes behind their computers. It would have been a different story. Uh, well, I think I think you've you've kind of kind of summed it up. But I mean, let's face it. I mean, someone found the special effects button. We had the whole black and white, but just with like the luminous effects. Just they should have like spent that. the time on 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 massaging the vocals instead of massaging the video. <laughs> Andy, you're no fun. Gemma, right, come she, on, surely she got, this. She got she got nominated for a Grammy for this song. Wow. So it's she, impressive. She, she did all right out yeah, of it. She did. I mean, do we all agree that basically the fact that Gina G did so badly against <clears throat> some of the competition? Um, was kind of like the death knell for kind of this era of the contest where, you know, you had like 1995 Nocturne one, didn't it? And there was only about 30 words in the song all told mm. from start to finish. I mean, Sean, yeah. what's your take? It's such a shame. It's a banger. You know, it's, it's one of those songs you hear the few opening bars and then it's like you put your drink down and you go and dance to it. And the, the studio recording is amazing. But live, oh, she was flat as a witch's tit. <laughs> she wasn't she. I mean, no, she, 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 she was on the finest moment. No, oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Gina, but you were, darling. And, I mean, could, 
performing second won't have helped. We were never going to win it starting second anyway, were we? So uh, it wouldn't but, have made yeah. a difference for a tuning, though, would it? Let's face it. But she it's tried to come back. In, she, she, we haven't. She, she tried to come back in 2005 with a shite song. She finished last in our national selection, didn't she? Mm. Yeah, well, that was that was more of the song than anything else, wasn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I wouldn't yeah. have bothered. But yeah. uh, and somehow yeah. still managed to finish below Katie Price. <laughs> I know yeah, that one work out mm. when she. I think that was a pink telephone thing in '96. It could have been a very different story, but there you go. Uh, I think the right, room, Steve. Yeah, the chat room is asking for a better look at uh, Donna's dress. I'm oh not... no, no, no! You don't want to see the rest oh. of it. Just use your imagination, darling. <laughs> Are you naked? Are you naked from the waist downwards? <laughs> telling. I'm not, not the first I'm... time. <laughs> Steve, don't give all my secrets away. I know. I'd be more worried if that was me. <laughs> oh, do you know what, guys? I think we're just gonna we're just we'll just push it on slightly. Now, the postcard. I think we just to need to say though. Go on. That this is another example of Australia crawling their way into the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't yeah. know, she was born in Australia, and yeah. that song gets played at every Australian Eurovision party I've ever been to. Oh, that's oh, what she's slowly really trying to yeah, get our way in. But I, so, bet they I bet they don't play Long Live Love, do they? <laughs> no. <laughs> so that was my line. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, darling. Now, um, the postcards for this year featured lovely little good luck messages. Now, you'd think they'd be by really, really, really important people. Let's take a look. The very best of luck to the United Kingdom's entry and to you, Gina G. The Secretary of State for National Heritage. Really? Is that a thing? Was this was this a good idea at the time, or was this just something that just? Is that why we came eight? Well, <laughs> you have to wonder. I'm not quite sure what the idea was behind the whole political good luck messages. It was it all seems a bit bizarre, really. It seems very formal, and you know something they might have done in say the the sixties or something. It's not in the. Uh... Not in the 1990s. No. It seems very out of step with the, the feel of the contest. It's, it's the one thing in the whole production I think sticks out as being a bit odd. That I'm trying to re rebrand it Euro Song, which they dropped the following year. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But apart from that, I think it's a great contest. But yeah, these postcards, those messages just yeah. didn't, didn't seem to fit in at all. Yeah. It's odd because also the competition, the Euro Song contest is not meant to be about governments. No, all political no. messages. Yeah, all, no. politics. It's specifically <laughs> nothing to do with the governments. But and then suddenly wasn't it there only the UK that sent on. a politician. No, yeah. I do believe there were, there were various yeah. ministers involved, yeah. quite high, yeah. senior senior members of politicians. Huh? Various seen, senior people were there across mm. the mm. board uh, for the good luck messages. I believe that was it. The prime minister of was it Turkey, Turkey? maybe. Yeah. Yes, that was there. Yeah, and then the the current T shock as he was at the time, um, John Bruton mm. for Ireland as well got the mm. the big mention. So you know, mm. but perhaps a bit of the uh, a bit of the contest that was possibly best best left, best left to the yeah. past, really. <laughs> yes. Oh, now move on, move on. Gemma is dressed for the occasion. Let's take a look at the Portuguese entry. <laughs> Uh, Portugal and Cyprus. Gemma, the Portuguese entry. I'm assuming this oh. was one of your favourites. Um, you know, the song... <laughs> oh, hold on. Hey. I'm very proud of this, guys. Um, I spent, I will not care to admit how much time I spent making this. <laughs> oh, man. The song 
is very, let's be honest, is very Portuguese. It's their standard. They're singing about their culture in their normal style. Um, it is, I believe my facts are correct, that it is the best ever placing for Portugal until they won in 2017, which is no. fairly <laughs> impressive. Yeah. And well deserved, to be fair. Yeah. But the more fun fact is that this lovely lady is in love, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, blows my mind. I can. I had to keep rewatching it. I was like, no way. No would way. You, would you like to, for, for everyone at home, just uh, let us know that the plot point in Love Actually that she's in? But maybe people that haven't seen she, it. She is the lovely Portuguese lady um, who has a little love affair with... Colin first, I believe. Yeah. Oh. And it is just very amusing because she spends oh. the whole time talking Portuguese. It's very cute. Very cute. It is. It is. Now, also, we saw Cyprus there and we had a seasoned, a seasoned Eurovision performer, I believe, in the form of Konstantinos. Also uh, from uh, Ella Ella in 2005. Also, um, in the, um, um, can we lose, uh, can we just use the term very loosely here? Boy band, gimme, uh, <laughs> uh, one, sorry, that sung gimme in 2002. Um, he's done quite a lot for Cyprus, but I'm not entirely sure this was one of his best efforts. Um, I have to say, I think I prefer the other two songs. I'm not entirely sure the ballad suited him. I don't know what the rest of the panel think on that one. He's got a nice vibrato. Oh, Andy, that's that's such a nice comment. <laughs> don't, if you don't have anything less, nice to say, less, don't say anything at all. That's what less, my mother always said. <laughs> I can't is, even hear the word vibrato without laughing. Which is why I didn't put my name down to review the next two tracks. Off we go. <laughs> Oh, he cut the note oh. off. He cut the note off, Tom. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to fade to black at some point. Might as well have been there. Sean, in a woman's heart. Were you were you were you finding the heart of this song? No. <laughs> I did not like the song. I did not like her outfit. I did not like her voice. She sounded like, you know, when, you drop, when you're on a bike and you're riding down a cobbled street. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? She, <laughs> she, she sounded like she was driving down a cobbled street on a bike. Um, oh, God. That, that is probably the worst three minutes I've ever spent on this planet listening to that song. It is absolutely awful. She's singing about a man. She's not sure that she should be falling for him. Uh, she believed all his promises and now he's leaving her. It's like, oh, it's painful. It's shy. Well, I think that offers a, a, a unique view. Does anyone have anything positive, positive to say about Malta at all? No. Andy? <laughs> Sorry. You couldn't understand a word she said and it was English she was singing. <laughs> But I found I thought she found her key very quickly. Um, now uh, we've also got the Croatia uh, in there. Um, Ian, what did you make of the Croatian song? Um, apart from two moments in it, I really like it. Yes. It's it's a really powerful, big, dramatic ballad, um, um, and it's great. I actually, it gave them uh, their best position. Um, uh, overall, in the competition for years. Yeah, with the only forth. exception from ninety nine. Um, and yeah. Which, considering it nearly, it was very close to not qualifying, is quite a jump. Um, but those two notes, or <laughs> whatever they were meant to be, the glass shattering notes. Um, Hasn't it yeah. become a record now as well? It's just in the two thousand and fourteen <laughs> cannot uh, imagine. records um, so. show they actually did the they recorded her as the highest note, I believe, in the whole right. competition. 
<laughs> Possibly the highest note against... achieved because um, Laponia, she missed the note. Mm. Yeah. Um, oh, Seuss must have hit a higher note mm. in, in I, 2012. But... I was thinking what it's notes did um, uh, Greta Thunberg's mother hit with Lavoie? Oh, oh yes. yeah. Tuneful ones. Not there. Yes, this one I can't say was a tuneful one. Yeah, although it will it's, hit a note. It's a real shame actually because this song I think is otherwise. It's a really good, powerful, dramatic song, and I just can't understand what they were thinking of for those that bit. It doesn't even fit with the song. <laughs> no. It's just oh. no. now. So, sorry, Croatia, but so oh. now a song that I thought had real heart, a bit of yeehaw and hallelujah, uh, was the Austrian entry. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Such vigor, such vibe, such noise. The very best of luck to the United Kingdom's entry and to you, Gina G. <laughs> I'm on it, don't worry. <laughs> Off the dog down. <laughs> Oh, well, come on, Andy. That Austrian song surely, surely um, should have done so much better. You'd think, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the singer, the song, the staging, <laughs> the, the, the direction, the fact that the, the, the producer of the show, the director of the show, obviously knew it wasn't going to do anything, so didn't put any effort into it. Apart from all of that, yeah, should have won. Was this? I think this was one of the rare songs where the um, producer didn't actually find the button marked special effects and apply them to the Austrian <laughs> song. Special measures, maybe. <laughs> oh, come on. I think there's a lot to be said for like an old fan, you know, they run around the piano and it's like, oh, you know, jazz hands and oh. Well, you should be reviewing it yourself then. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it'd be more fun to make you review it, Andy. Yeah, no, I can't stand it. Oh. I do like the, the the following one, but you're gonna ask somebody else to talk about that. Well, do you know what, Andy? You, you, uh, I'm gonna I'm no, gonna no, let you no, say no. no, no. You you say something. Go on. Don't let me. Kathy say Leander's song was lovely. Oh, and Gemma, what did you make of Kathy Leander's song? Well, <laughs> I mean, the one word I wrote down was dull. And then I found out I was reviewing it, and I was like, "Ah, oh, damn it!" <laughs> they um they used the the effect of the night was the lovely rippled water effect that almost every second song had, <laughs> and it was the first time I saw it, and I was like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, choice." She just looked like a ghost the whole time. She just shimmered, and she's singing. She's basically singing. She loves him. She hates him. Like, make up your mind, lady. Like, you clearly want to break... You've broken up with him for a reason. Stick with your guns. You're not a fan of a doormat song, then? No. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> oh. Well, and Lee Fern has said in the chat that, you know, one of uh, Austria's backing singers indeed did represent them uh, the following year. It happens to also coincidentally be one of my favourite ever Austrian entries as well. And how did uh, that do, Tom? Uh, look, <laughs> I like to think myself as a very, very firm supporter of the underdog, and underdog they are. <laughs> they, they also have the backing. They also have the singer from the previous year as one of the backing singers as well. Oh, so incestuous, isn't it? Yeah, it is a jazz, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is totally. I mean, let's let's look at you know, Suri was backing singer for Belgium twice, and then represented the mm. UK. Is, it seems to all come full circle in the end. Uh, even nothing, in the nothing to do with well. who you sleep with. Nothing whatsoever. <laughs> now, let's move on. Oh, I believe it's time for a bit of a bit of Greek music. It might be. <laughs> no, apparently it's not. <laughs>
Well, I think we've got two very contrasting entries there. Greece obviously finding out that white is soon to be the in colour for every pop record in the 90s. <laughs> uh, uh, Stu, you've, you've changed your name. Is that by deed poll? I just, yeah, I just kind of got, I got bored of listening to you guys being so fucking negative. So I thought I would change my name to something so positive as Gina G spot Jerry Halliwell. That's who I am tonight. I'm going to bring some positivity because I absolutely love this song. Greece is fantastic. Mariana tried to represent uh, Greece uh, a few times before. 1987, she was a backing singer for the, the duo Bang, if anyone remembers that. In 1989, she actually beat Anna Vesey in the Greek national final and finished ninth at Eurovision, 1989. And then 1996, didn't do so well, did she finish 14th, but did, did try again in 1998. Didn't quite work out for her. It's a great song, though, and she sings about the things that her and her lover like to do together in the winter, which reminds her of spring. What would that be? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, and maybe for the producers of the 98 show, it would have been better if she'd have won the Greek national final, judging by what happened. Check uh, out our Retrovision 98 <laughs> programme. Andy. Yeah. What? Cool. Yes, darling, sorry, what? Uh, it's okay, you, you'd frozen. You were a frozen moment in time, very briefly on my screen. Oh. Um, now, that was joined by what I think was actually quite a nice, unique entry. Um, from France. Ian and Donna, talk to us about the French entry. <laughs> mm. I quite like the French entry, actually. Although you wouldn't say it was a big banger. It's more of a, a slow burn, really. Um, beautiful Celtic ballad, as we were very used to in the 90s. But this one's more a mixture of Celtic from a place you wouldn't expect. Yeah, it's the, the genre. Basically, it's Breton. It's, there's... Um, in, uh, Northwest France and Brittany. There's um, sort of very strong fringe of Celtic music that runs down Scotland, Ireland, Wales, down into Brittany. And this is a beautiful example of it. In fact, the, the two singers are actually one's Welsh, one's Scottish. Um, Karen Matheson, who's the lead singer for um, the hugely successful Scottish band Capra Cayley. Um And it is beautiful. It's a really lovely song. Um, very on Eurovision, and, and probably why it didn't do so well. It, it didn't fit very well with everything else. It's just probably a bit too gentle. There's um, much more modern up-tempo variants on this style of music um, to a lot of what Capra Cayley does. And I think they would have done a lot better. Um, it just didn't quite... It's just, a, it's just a wee bit too nice and a wee bit dull. But otherwise, really beautiful. Um, do we think... Also, it would work for the UK if the UK went down this route. I'll go back to you, Ian. Um, probably at the time, it probably would have done. Um, think about it, during the um, mid nineties, Celtic music was massively popular right across Europe. Um, a lot of Celtic um, folk rock bands were, were playing arena level tours across um, across Europe. So there was a definite mood to listen to that music, and it's something the UK never sort of capitalised on. Um, even Norway sent a, a mass, a hugely Celtic song in Nocturne and won. Um, and we never went for it, um, despite having the composers, the artists, the singers, the bands ready to go. Um, we never sent them ourselves. We sent for France. Um, it would be interesting to see what would have happened. Um, yeah, I think it's a tantalising what if, isn't it? Because mm. so many mm. songs, I mean, at this point, I think 96, you're hitting that tail end, aren't you? As it's starting to morph into mm. something else as well. It makes you wonder what luck France would have had if they'd have sent the entry perhaps a year earlier. Mm. Were they just a year too late um, mm. with that song? Because um, you're right, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful ballad. Um, now, speaking of beautiful ballads, our next song is from A Familiar Face. Uh, from Estonia. The very best of luck to the United Kingdom's entry. Uh, 
Steve. I know I, I know I totally blocked out the other singer in that because obviously yeah. Maria did come moon. back. Well, she did come back and represent Estonia <laughs> again the following year. But yeah. what did we think of the Estonian entry? I, I, I think this is a very nice song, actually. And I remember seeing the national final version where the two singers were in different studios. And, um, uh, you know, it, it does look a little like she's brought her grandfather along for good measure. But it's a really, really nice song. And I think it's just the second time Estonia entered. And, of course, she came back as a soloist a year later. And I think she was 15 or 16 um, when she sang that. She looked so much older. But she's got a beautiful voice, and I think it deserved to finish in the top five. Brilliant song. Love it. Mm, supremely talented. Absolutely talented. Tell you mm. what was interesting to note is how they altered the dress sense between the two years. Oh, yes. In yes. 96, it was kind of like very shapeless um, yeah. trouser suit. Mm. And by the time it got to 97, it was more kind of sleek showing off everything kind of yeah. dress and she gave it some shoulder as well didn't she very yeah. she became a woman in 97 <laughs> it, it did but <laughs> what a what a song what a song i mean yeah. this but this for me was one of my favorites i don't know what the rest of the panel think yeah i actually quite like this one um it's one that i seem to remember upon watching it again um don't know whether that was for a good or a bad reason really but it's definitely one that i i slotted in the subconscious somewhere from watching it the first time round. So, yeah, it can all be good, can't it? That's it. Now, something that was good, perhaps better than good, where the expectations were at its highest uh, was with the Norwegian entry, represented by one half of my favourite ever Eurovision act, I hasten to add, uh, Elizabeth Andresen, um, who sung uh, Ladet's Finger in 1985 and won the contest. She was back 11 years later with this rather fabulous ballad. <laughs> Such a great song. Now, Stu is going to uh, review this for us. But I know amongst us ESC fan TV faithfuls, we do have, we do have uh, some other people that, re I say some other people, and we have one other person that is, I think we can say, a standard bearer for Norwegian entries. Someone who loves uh, the Norway songs a lot. So let's just take a look and see what she thinks. Hi, I'd just like to say that my favourite from 1996 was Norway. It was Elizabeth Andreessen, who was one half of Bobby Sox in 1985. And um, the song, which, forgive my pronunciation, Eervit, um, absolutely loved that. She was fantastic. Her singing was amazing. Um, that live orchestra just blew me away her performance with that uh it, it was just perfect perfect for the stage perfect for the orchestra um she was right on point with the vocals lovely um sort of tone to her voice and you know it doesn't matter how many times you listen to bobby socks and the duets and they well yeah that that singing was really good no one ever predicted that that's how she would sing and how wonderfully she could sing a, a ballad and a melody um really think that they should have went um not saying that island was was shouldn't have won. that was fabulous but yeah she was brilliant um so yeah my perfect favorite hey and big thanks to jay for providing that clip for us Stu, was joe right should elizabeth andreasen have walked away with the trophy on home turf i think uh this is one of the best eurovision entries that year for sure um uh and Elizabeth Andreasen is a huge Eurovision star, isn't she? Uh, when I think back to Eurovision in the 90s, even the 80s, you can't really think of anyone bar Elizabeth Andreasen. I remember some of the stuff she did later years when she teamed up uh, to uh, create uh, Kiki Bet and Lotta for the Swedish Melody Festival and um, failed that year, came third, so went to Norway the next year and came fourth. Um, yeah, it's a great song, actually. Um, it was re-recorded uh, in multiple languages, including the English, so it translates as Eternity. Um, 
yeah, I mean, what to say about Elizabeth Andresen? She holds the record uh, for the most participations of a woman at Eurovision, tied only with the late uh, Lisa Asa. Uh, Sue from Peter, Sue and Mark. And unfortunately for Andreas, uh, Elizabeth Andreasen, Valentina Moneta from San Marino. But then I'm not sure anyone could ever beat that record. Um, it's a phenomenal song. And not, uh, yeah, I, I think that quite honestly, it should have probably beaten Ireland. Um, actually, Ireland, Norway and France are very, very similar. And um, I think it's very difficult to call between them. But I, for me, I probably would have just seen Norway edge it. Uh, and do you know what? And I, I think it was actually you that came out with the stat. If Elizabeth Andreasen had actually pipped um, Iamir Quinn, Quinn to the post in 1996, she would have been the second most successful Eurovision artist of all time as well. Ooh. So there we go. A tantalising <laughs> fact. Let's move on. Now, up next. Ha! Well... Steve has got the wig. We're going to look at the, the marvelous Slovenia, be and kind. also, I, I will be, I will be, I, I will be the picture, the picture of you know solemnity, um, but also because there's another favourite entry of mine coming up as well. Must be the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, we finished. And um, Steve, what did we make of Slovenia? Well, I, I'm Slovenia today because I just happen to have this wig. I'm, I'm afraid it's a bit of a Johnny One Note song, and I think it just goes nowhere fast. I, I think it's one of those that I'm really surprised it qualified. She did have a much better song, Glasgora, that she sang at the Slovenian final two years later, but she failed to make it through. So I think it, it's an inoffensive song, but uh, it just doesn't go anywhere. Uh, now, I have to say, because Gemma looked like she was she was out to play there. Is, is that a ukulele you've got there, Gemma? Or what, what, uh, what is the instrument you have in front of you? I don't know. It was like a Portugal hat on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, when I first watched it, I thought it was just um, some traditional Portuguese uh, instrument. Um, and then when I looked closer, I realised there was this whole bit on the front, and I was like, "Oh no, it must just be a ukulele." Hey. But um, I keep strumming it um, while I'm thinking, um, so I don't know what that means um, because it clearly doesn't make any sound. <laughs> but it, it, it was absolutely fabulous. That was really good. That and Donna's, oh. Donna's dress has so much work gone into it. <laughs> Why? It was so much fun. <laughs> absolutely amazing. <laughs> now, uh, what did you think of Slovenia's song? Is it a one note wonder? Oh, man, um, I don't, I've got nothing nice for this song. Um, it's I've legit, put you on the spot, I haven't I? I wrote anything down for this song. I wrote nothing because I was like, oh, Jesus, why? <laughs> well, oh, I'll tell, I tell you, I'll you, tell you what. what. Should we well, give her credit? She, she enjoyed herself. <laughs> this is this is tr this is true. Now I have to say I totally agree with Campbell in the chat room, um, who says uh, so much love for the Erste Kier, uh, one of my top three favourite ever Dutch entries. Yes, absolutely. What a fantastic song. Um, you know, a duo singing about getting in touch with one another after their relationship. Um, ended some years previously and they're aiming to pick it up just like the first time as well um, they got 78 points um, and you know what I thought this was such a great song and I'm sure I'm not influenced by the fact that I hear this on ESC radio um, every now and again as well um, but it was a song that I really thought um, perhaps should have done a touch better uh, maybe um, but it was 
you know, it's an, an enjoyable jaunt, I believe. Oh, let's move on. Belgium and Finland. <laughs> The very best of luck to the United Kingdom's entry and to you, Gina G. Uh, now, Ian and Donna, let's start with Belgium. Liefid is in Kartspiel. That's easy for you to say, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I actually like this one. Let's bring a bit of niceness to this. Um, she really gives it everything. Her performance is fabulous. She's even channeling her inner Celine Dion, isn't she, with that dress? And, and um, yeah, you... I think somebody said on the rewatch the other night, it's quite nice where you think you can understand what she's actually singing because words sound so similar to English as it comes out. And you're like, oh, yeah, she's a gambler, she's a joker. She's... Um, yeah, I just like it. <laughs> yeah, it's, now... it's a great song, and it's, it's so good that Norway sent it again in 2001. Oh. Sweden, Sweden, Ian. Sweden, Sweden. Sorry, Sweden. Sweden. Sorry, Sweden. Oh, sorry, I was my notes wrong. Sorry. Yes. I was going to say, let's, I mean, obviously... Um, it's being mentioned in the chat room. You know, love Lisa's song. The tune returned to ESC for Sweden in 2001. Um, we've got, uh, she should have sued friends, listen to your heartbeat. Funnily enough, it was an out of court settlement. And for those yeah. of you that don't know what we're talking about, let's just remind us of this clip from Retrovision 2001. I was totally wrong. See now, I don't know. I don't know what the what the worst insult is. The fact that they plagiarised the song, or that Sweden came fifth with it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, plagiarised the song that did so badly, though. Oh, I know, I know. Or maybe he actually thought, you know, it's just missing something because it was yeah. similar to me. It was missing that one thing, and I can't put my finger on what it is. But then you listen to the other one, and you're like, hang on a minute. They've made it somehow more Swedish and a bit more like ABBA and, and they've got a little bit of Barry White in there and it's it's just that little extra something. I don't know what it is. I'd love to know what it is, but yeah. I think a different dress would have gone a, a long way, maybe. Oh, maybe, you know, the leather and two people on stage rather than one, you know, that mm. having two sometimes is much better. But of course, uh, Sir Knight one three nine nine says she should have pelted friends with stale Belgian. <laughs> 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 oh, now, guys, we are hitting fast, hitting uh, the home straight, as it were. And it's normally at this point the winner normally unveils itself onto the stage, and this one's no exception. Uh, Ireland's The Voice taking them to their fourth victory in five years something that I think um, we can only dream of <laughs> well I think we could only dream of it and I think uh, RTE were having nightmares about it by the end of it although I did I did hear that in 97 um, RTE had already signed an agreement with the BBC that the BBC were going to host if Ireland were to walk away with the trophy for a fifth time in six years. Um, but I'm here, Quinn. Andy. Well, I think I think she, I think she gets a, a bit of a hard press. Really, I, it's quite a nice song. It's just that it was slightly out of tune. 
here and there. It was the last in a long line of very, very similar sort of um, ethnic songs. And it wasn't as good as the French song. If the places had been reversed, I would have been delighted. But, but the, reason have... it won, the reason it won was because of the clip you played where it suddenly went into 6-8 time, um, the, the screen became blurry, and it looked lovely and it sounded lovely, but I, I, I was astonished. Do you not think this it. had echoes of river dance running through it as well, which I yeah. think probably mm -hmm. aided its yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Top. And talking, I mean, talking, talking, talking about um, how things come round and go round. Um, Norway won in in the, the the previous year with the Irish um, violinist who'd been in the in the orchestra in Dublin the year before. So there was this long line of, of, of um, people that were involved in the winning songs again until Katrina came along the following year changed it all uh yes well Brendan Graham obviously I mean he he managed to win the contest wasn't it twice in three years because rock and roll kids was his creation wasn't it mm -hmm. um with uh Charlie Maggetti and, and Paul and I can't remember his name what Out. did he have to do with the the Irish song in 1996 he wrote it did he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at me. Yeah. He wrote he wrote he wrote the winners in ninety four and ninety six. You learn something every day. Oh, do you know what? I'm I'm actually I'm actually more surprised that I'm the one telling you. Hey, well, <laughs> just so am I. <laughs> I'm like I'm like, wow. So oh. so am I absolutely true. <laughs> oh gosh. Right. There you might have been the runaway winner on the night. Like this song but... won. Mm. <clears throat> I was just going to say, it might be the runaway like winner on the night, but we didn't give it any points, did we? The UK didn't give it a single point. Did we not? Yeah, but Ireland have been doing that to us for years ever since. <laughs> uh, so, Gemma, what were you going to say? We got eight from then. Go Sorry, on, Gemma. Gemma, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, you can see why it won. Like, it, it doesn't sound like anything else that was on that night. It doesn't look like anything else that was on that night. Like, it just it stood out for the pure essence that it was different, and it caught your attention like i can understand what how it has won and with a lead like yeah. mm. it was I, very I theatrical a... wasn't it overall it just yeah. it, mm. it summed up the whole period of the 90s of irishness mm. in eurovision it's just if you're going to go out on a song that's the one to go out on um all you needed was a little bit more like low fogging and some leprechauns and then then we're good yeah. um yeah <laughs> yeah I, I have a dread, dreadful admission to make um, I was I, I was smoking wacky backy that night with, with 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 a party of people, and we started voting for all the songs. And once we'd given twelve points to quite a few songs, we had to rescore it all. Um, and the visual effects were just amazing. And we thought, oh, well, that's because we've had too too much cannabis. And then I watched it back the following day, and they were still there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> tell, you, tell, you, tell, you, tell you what, Andy. Let's 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 just move on, shall we? Let's let's look at, Ice <laughs> let's look at Iceland and Poland. You might be lucky. Ah, oh. so come on then, Gemma, Shooby Doo. Oh. Shooby Doo or Shooby Do you know how long? It, do you know how long it took me to realise they weren't saying Scooby Doo? Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> even when we googled it, the first thing that came on my phone was like, "You mean Scooby Doo?" And I'm like, "I do not." <laughs> but I'm like. What a funky little song, like different to send to it. She wrote it with her dad. Like, that's cool. Um, and, like, all her backing singers got the memo that um, everyone was to wear white suits, you know, the white powerful suit of 1996 that everyone wore. So they're ticking all the boxes. They got their little effects in there as well. But, yeah, I was um, surprised, actually, it didn't do 
better because it's, it's just something a little bit different, even if it is maybe a few decades out of its time. Mm. Uh, and Campbell says, you know, I feel naughty for enjoying Iceland as much as I do. Mm. Interesting there, Campbell. Um, <laughs> wonder where the enjoyment comes from and joseph says the icelandic entry wasn't the best one but it added to the diversity of the contest and i think i think i think that is although um sir knight does say iceland is a vision of if we'd had eurovision in the 1940s yeah, <laughs> yeah it's kind of fisher price my first lounge jazz <laughs> There speaks a jazz connoisseur, if ever there was one. Now, we also saw um, the Polish entry there as well. Um, Andy, what did you make of the Polish song? Okay, so you wouldn't honestly have counted um, the Icelandic song as jazz. It, it was like jazzy. But the Polish song was jazz. Um it's fantastic. It, it was far and away the most complex song of the night. The harmonies are incredible. The notes of the song are just beautiful. Um, but it's not an easy listen. I mean, it really isn't. The, the, the lyrics don't, don't offer an easy listen. It, it's one that rewards listening to again and again and again. Um, and I wasn't surprised that it didn't didn't win. I was, I was actually presently surprised it came 11th. We didn't get anything like it again until 2012 when um, Seuss amazed everybody by coming fifth. And then again in 2017 when Jamala won. And those three songs, um, I find, have um, a big connection between the, between the three of them. We've lost our hosts. We have lost our hosts. I, I agree. It's a We're directionless without him. Oh, <laughs> I like well, we could, Steve. oh, so when this happens, we can talk about the host. That's true. Oh, uh, no, he's gone. Oh, no, he's back. He's back. Oh. Oh. Dang it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. The very best of luck to the United Kingdom's entry and to you, Gina G. Brilliant. Thank you for that. <laughs> oh. Thanks, thanks for the subtle introduction. <laughs> now, oh, now um, I was going to ask Stu what he thinks of the Polish entry as well, but I'm not sure where Stu is. I think Stu may be experiencing a couple of technical difficulties. I can tell you what he thinks of it. He thinks it's as beautiful as I think it is because we were talking about that earlier on. Oh. Well, in which case, we'll move on and we'll look at Bosnia and Slovakia. Okay, this is a bit of a guess. Uh, Ian and Donna, Bosnia, what did we think? Well, uh, let's just say I forgot about this, even though I'd watched it three times. <laughs> um, and what is going on with her hair? It's like, what attacked mm. her? Um, I still can't work it out. Has she got bunches? Has, oh, I don't know. It, it's very distracting. She reminds me a bit of Elvira. <laughs> three hairstyles in one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the all in one. Yeah, it's just a bit dull. Yeah, it, it nice doesn't. Done, well sung, it doesn't but... build. It doesn't go anywhere. But yeah. I mean, best bassiest vocal in the competition. Mm. But uh, yeah, she's got a cracking voice. But yeah, just... not a great song. Oh. Yeah. Uh, now also uh, in that lineup um, was Slovakia with uh, Marcel Polonda singing a song that, let's be honest, I'm, I'm Kim Nazmas. Maybe I've probably not even pronounced it correctly. But did you know? Did you know, people? That is the best ever performance of a Slovakian yeah. song in the Eurovision Song Contest, coming 18th out of 23. <laughs> um, wow. And Marcel did actually attempt to represent Slovakia um, again in 2010. Now, I thought this actually had potential. I quite enjoyed this song. It's a, 
I think it was possibly ahead of its time in what I think was actually um, a good, strongish uh, Balkan ballad. But unfortunately, their time had not quite arrived yet. Um, I certainly enjoyed it. I thought it was good fun. Um, and certainly one uh, to watch. Now, one that everyone was probably watching um, was that um, Sweden, because Sweden had won the video uh, semi-final with their song One, uh, not One More Time. It was sung by One More Time. The song was called Den Bilder. Um, let's take a listen. Oh. Oh, this is going so well. <laughs> the very best of luck to the United Kingdom's entry and to you, Gina G. <laughs> Uh, obviously, these were the days before carpool karaoke, but Sean. What did we make of the Swedish song? Oh, I absolutely love it. I mean, normally I'm just up for a banger, but this is, ah, it, it is beautiful. I love it. It was very Enya-esque, I thought. I love the musical arrangement. I love the backing vocals. I love the harmonies between uh, Nane and Maria. I thought it was a beautiful song. It's a lovely, heartwarming story about a man and his wilderness mistress and the dancing in this tavern and there's... Lots of rumours of what they're up to behind closed doors and stuff, and they, they scoot off into the night in a horse-drawn carriage in, in the snow. And Oh, it's a beautiful song. Um, I don't know if you've heard the English version of it, but there is one knocking about. Uh, the uh, the title of the song, Den Wilder, it translates as The Wild One, but the English version of the song that they released is renamed The Wilderness Mistress. Um, but it, it, I love it. I think it's an absolutely beautiful song, a really, really good song. And um, yeah, they've got quite a history of uh, of, uh, of Peter and uh, Nane, of course. Peter, who's a member of the band, uh, is the son of Benny from ABBA. Yeah, um, I didn't know that. Oh, he's indeed, yeah. But of course, Nane has entered um, Melody Festival Ireland several times, hasn't she, as we know? Uh, as a composer and as an artist more recently, like you just mentioned, Corporal Karaoke from this year, which uh, was an absolute blast. I loved it. Uh, but yeah, uh, the band is still together. Uh, there's a rumours of uh, a fifth album. They've never disbanded. Uh, so I'll have to wait and see if they uh, come back as a group into Melfest in, in the future. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and I also, love the song. My winner, my winner tonight. I loved it. And of course, Nan Grenville also attempted to represent the UK in 2001. Yeah. Could, could uh, I ask you a question of, 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 of Sean? <clears throat> was, was this song a coded reference to sex, like Take Me To Your Heaven was? A coded reference for sex? Mm. They were up to all sorts of dirty mares. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think it was coded reference to sex. No, I, I think well, it's quite all right. Was it about it. sex? Everything's about sex with you, Andy, isn't it? <laughs> I wish. See, <laughs> I, I like Joseph's idea in the chat room, and he says it was like a northern fairy tale. I agree. Well done, oh. Joseph. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful how it would be. Now, all, I say all week, since Wednesday, you've been voting on your favourite 1996 entrance, and very soon we're going to unveil the Retrovision winner of 1996. <laughs> It could be a shock to some, but in the meantime, let's take a look at special effects we can't afford by taking a look at the scoreboard from 1996 instead. <laughs> well, let me present the blue room. Nice, isn't it? A bit boring. All the jurors across Europe to keep things under control while numbers are flying in. 
Wow. Nice. Come on, guys, seriously. Was that not the most awesome school board? It was, that is just so impressive, isn't it? it my, my favourite Eurovision scoreboard ever. And I love the interaction with it where she walks between the two halves of the scoreboard and at one point they don't open and she has to go, <laughs> and they stop and it's, it's great. <laughs> I, I don't know how it must have looked in the arena. I mean, I suppose they only saw the, the proper effect on the big screens, assuming there were big screens there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it, on TV, for its time, 96. Wow, amazing. But the problem I mean, was you couldn't actually follow the scores because it didn't show you the the scores that were being given. There, there was only just the, the totals that changed. So it was quite yeah. difficult to see what was going on. It was beautiful to look at, but not very practical. Mm. 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 Although, to be fair, that whole... I mean, it wasn't until the BBC hosted in 98 that that was brought back because it certainly wasn't a feature in... Uh, 1997 either no. i don't even think it was a feature in, in actual fact a lot of the 90s contests i think it was a revived mm. feature wasn't it mm. so it helped you count what was going on mm. Mm. yeah mm. as we do now where the badges go on and it's like one two yeah three four yeah, yeah. um but yeah <laughs> impressive impressive effects it was we could have a whole show about the scoreboards we, we should. should. We, we could. could. Maybe that will be a retrovision <laughs> special. Oh, Vote for the best scoreboard. <laughs> In the meantime, allow me to unveil to you a more low-tech version, and it's the ESC Fan TV scoreboard with the results of this week's watch party. Drum roll, please. Ta -da! <laughs> And there we can oh, see look at that. it oh. is a Norwegian victory this week. 221 points in some of the closest voting we've ever seen on these. Uh, the UK coming in second, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Uh, 196. Uh, Sweden some distance uh, after that. Um, and, mm. well, I'm not going to lie, guys. I may have made up about 50% of Austria's points that are sat at the bottom <laughs> of that table. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> because I liked it, even if no one else did. And you can see we've also got some justice for France as well, who are further up the table on 77. Mm. Oh, guys, what are your reactions to that? Any shocks and surprises? Not with the top four, certainly. Yeah. Although, just a little bit more. Just needed a Ooh, little oh. bit more. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. Uh, and Gina G, do you have, I mean, we've got three Gina Gs in the room now. I've just bought, bought <laughs> Stu in. Any reactions, Gina G, to your, your second place? <sighs> I'm a bit surprised the UK are that far up, actually. I, I kind of thought at the beginning of the week, because I, I run the scoreboard, I was watching the scores, and it was uh, it was Ireland, Norway, and France in the first three. So uh, the UK kind of come out of everywhere, but then I suspect there's a lot of UK voters giving their 12 points to uh, to Gina G there. But uh, yeah, good to see Norway win. Probably the right result. There'll be a lot of love mm. for the studio version, let's face it, because it's one yeah. of those things that we've grown up with now. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter how many times you watch it in retrospect, you think, oh, my God, that's a lot worse than I thought it was. <laughs> you still remember the studio version. So you do. It's a lot I, I heard it in, in the Fridge Nightclub in Brixton, which was the place to be. And Steve mm. um, will, will confirm this. The, the place yeah. to be in the whole of London and best nightclub in the world at the time and all of a sudden they went dan, 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 and i thought what the fuck is that uh, <laughs> and then it stopped and then they carried on playing another song and then it went dan, 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 and i thought that sounds like gina g uh, and they played another song and then it went dan, 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 and i ran from the balcony down to the dance floor. I got down to the dance floor by the time they went, ooh, ah, just a little bit. Well, they, were the best, clear, they the clearly had you. Life. Well, they Pratt, did. now. They did. Guys, we are coming to the end of tonight's show, but it is Eurovision week for all of us out there, even though there may be no contest uh, for us, or, or no new contest for us to watch this year. Stu, it's an exciting week coming up on ESC Fan TV, is it not? 
Yeah, sure is, Tom. Make sure you tune in tomorrow night, uh, Monday at 8 p.m. Central European time and Tuesday and Thursday, 8 p.m. Central European time for our semi-final one, semi-final two and grand final vote for the Eurovision Song Contest 2020. You can decide who qualifies and who wins. And join us again on Wednesday night on our Facebook page only at 8 p.m. Central European time, 7 p.m. British summer time for a very special watch party Eurovision 1974 and we'll do this again uh, our final retrovision of the season thankfully uh, next Sunday <laughs> night at 9pm Central European time but also also Friday night 8pm Central European time on YouTube Facebook um, possibly Twitter as well we will be counting down the best ever Eurovision winners of all time to find who you decide and vote for is the greatest ever Eurovision winner. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun, Tom. Uh, it's going to be amazing fun. And you can stick with this all week. There's going to be some of us popping up here, there and everywhere. And as Stu says, <laughs> next week, it's going to be the final retrovision of this season. And a chance for Andy, for Steve, to Stu to refresh their wig collection uh, uh, for a new we will, season. We will be voting for our favourite wig. <laughs> you can have this one with pleasure oh. 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 now guys lovely, isn't it? you have been a fantastic <laughs> you have been a fantastic panel uh, this evening thanks everyone for joining us um, it leaves me to say a big thanks to Andy thanks Andy oh thank you so much it's been fun thank you big thanks to Stu thanks Tom big thanks to Sean Thanks to Virginia Bottomley and to everyone tonight. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Big thanks to Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Well hosted. And... A, a big thanks to our, actually, no, a massive thanks to our early morning riser, because it is now only about quarter past six in the morning in Australia, the lovely Gemma. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's always fun. Thanks. Starts my day just right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. The very best of luck to the United Kingdom. We'll be back <laughs> next Sunday. We'll be back next Sunday for the final retrovision of the season 1974. In the meantime, oh. keep yourself tuned to ESC Fan TV. It's going to be a massive week. And we'll see you later. Thanks very much. Bye bye. 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 Oh, that's me, isn't it?